Welcome to the Oxen Group Nightly. My name is David Ristow. I'm the CEO, President, and Founder of the Oxen Group. The Oxen Group is a financial newsletter analysis and investment ideas website located at www.theoxengroup.com. Check us out today if you have any uh, need for investment ideas or would like to learn more about the market. Um, in tonight's Oxen Group Nightly, we're going to be talking about our uh, recap. Tonight, we're going to be talking about our July 26 recap of the market. We'll be looking at uh, how the market fared on Tuesday, as well as some of our current positions um, and exits that we took um, in our main portfolios. We'll also be looking at some of our secondary portfolios like Georgia's Corner, our Extended Value Portfolio, and our Dollar and Cents uh, Report. We'll also be talking about our forecast for tomorrow. And as always, please check out our disclaimer at the end of the video. Uh, well, we had another red day in the market. Um, it's been pretty much just boring nothingness in the market for the last uh, few days here. Um, we've had good earnings um, that have continued to not have any impact on the market as they've been outweighed um, tremendously by um, the debt ceiling crisis. However, today I thought it was the first day where we did have um, overarchingly uh, poorer news on the earnings front, and that helped did help, I think, bring us down a little bit further than um, the other days. Um, and I think that news on the market is starting to tire. I'm sorry about the debt ceiling is starting to tire. Um, Netflix and 3M did have a pretty... Uh, not weak, but decently weak earnings, um, and uh, 3M did pretty much weigh on the Dow um, for the majority of the day, the Dow 30, um, and Netflix, on the other hand, uh, was weighing um, on the NASDAQ. Um, the consumer confidence uh, that was improved in July um, and uh, did outweigh the estimates, uh, almost came in at about 60, expectations were nearing up 57. Um, so that was good, but really didn't give much, um, much to the market. Um, as it was kind of uh, coupled with uh, new home sales missing. Um, those were supposed to come in at 320 k for the year, um, and the latest figures they've dropped now down the estimate for the year at 312 k um, Here you can see those new home sales. And we're basically just flatlining across that bottom there. Uh, the likelihood that we, I think, go further than that is, is probably unlikely, um, but improvements are still not to be made um, until we see significant um, improvements in the jobs number. Um, market uh, dropped pretty hard in the last hour of trading. We were pretty much flat, very unvolatile throughout the day. Uh, trading um, for the majority after about the first hour, we traded in a pretty much a tight you know, 30 to 40 point range for the majority of the day. Um, and then we did get a nice little rally coming in around 2 o'clock, you know, the typical 2 p.m. stick. Um, and we, we kind of really took it off there. And I thought we might be able to really uh, start to get something moving in the market. And then right about as that started to happen, um, President Obama came out and said that he would veto the latest uh, Republican um, bill that they put out um, for the debt ceiling. Uh, you know, and that was expected that he would probably be to the bill, but you know, the timing of it was just really kind of poor. I thought um, we got the market going. Um, we were about to break out of a of an intraday channel. I thought um, sort of break out of these high this the open of the day. I thought that would really give us some momentum to finish uh, maybe up in the green. I thought even, um, and then that that announcement comes out and kind of just quashed any hopes for that, and we sort of really fell off a cliff at the end of the day. Um, luckily, we've been positioning ourselves. Um, into a lot of stocks that have the ability to do well even if the market was going down. Um, how do we do that? Well, we've been trying to find companies that we thought were slightly overvalued or had the ability to g gain momentum going into earnings, and one of those companies was Las Vegas Sands. Um, and it had performed well, um, but you know the market continued to, to, to move down and really couldn't get anything going on it. Um, we exited uh, about three-fourths of the position, um, pretty much neutral um, at the close um, on that. And then uh, looked, um, and then in after hours, we got a really, really nice gain on the stock. It's going to open probably uh, between, I would say, 48.50 and 49, and hopefully move towards around 50 uh, tomorrow. Um, and that's going to be a real nice gain for us, um, looking at about 5 to 6% um, for the last exit, and that will hopefully give us around a... Uh, about a one and a half to two percent, uh, hopefully one and a half gain, percent gain. Excuse me, um, on those earning on that position overall. And considering you know the way the market's been performing as of recently, um, for a stock like this to just basically buck that trend to not to move to the downside, and then while the market's moving down, us to be able to get a one and a half percent gain out of it, I think is pretty solid. Uh, another company that I like that was more Folk Southern, um, which we bought um, twice into um, and exited today. Um, averaged out for about a 0.8% <clears throat> gain 
Um, again, good as we've had three straight down days um, since we bought that stock. Um, and then after ours, they reported record uh, incomes and uh, revenues uh, for their second quarter, and uh, the stock was up uh, nearing on 77 in after hours. Um, so hopefully going to be able to get out of that stock for another nice gain there as well and take most of that position away for hopefully closing in on a 1.5 to 2% gain again. These gains don't sound like a tremendous amount, but when you can trade for 1.5 2% gain on a net four-day down um, on your long positions and then also have some short positions working in your favor at the same time as well, uh, that really can help bo boost your entire portfolio. And that's what we've done. So um, we've also today uh, took sold some... Uh, August 20, $55 puts on Lulu, uh, $55 you can make if those expire worthless, um, and the trade was about, I think, a $650 margin trade. Um, so you're looking at closing in on a 10% gain uh, on some stock that a stock that's about um, over, a little over 12% above that, that price. Um, so if we can hold the 12% um, over the next uh, about uh, 23, 22 days, um, uh, sorry, about, about 20 trading days, um, we can see Lulu that that come in and expire completely worthless. Um, we got the 20-day moving average and the pivot point between the price channels above that target, um, and the 50-day moving average is moving pretty quickly towards 55. It's at about 52.50 right now. Uh, so that we do like that um, position a lot there, um, as that stock seems to just have no signs of slowing down and no earnings before August 20th. Uh, we have our Dow Chemical monthly pick. Um, finally made the move today, uh, but basically ended about neutral um, moving into earnings tomorrow, and we decided to leave. It's only a quarter position, so we decided to leave the trade on uh, moving into tomorrow, and we do have some sold puts on that um, at the $34 level, uh, and those hadn't made enough money for us for us to exit them. So we're hoping uh, that the stock will move. It typically does move very well after earnings, um, and they're expecting good growth uh, year over year in their earnings per share, and we're hoping that those will come in as solid as we expect them to. Uh, we also are long on a Disney position. Uh, we're sitting down a little bit on that, uh, but that stock is right at the breakout level. Um, it did break a, a, a price channel and moving to the upside, um, and, it, and it stayed pretty well right around where we bought into it on Friday, um, given two straight down days and a down day on Friday. Uh, the bid, uh, you know, they're looking to sell Hulu. Um, we're hoping that announcement, if they're going to sell it, will come out right close to when earnings come out, so you get the combination of a Hulu bid and the earnings growth. Um, and that will help really push that position up significantly. Finally, we uh, sold short on oil, and we by um, grabbing the SCO ETF, we uh, sold half that for a 2.15% gain today, uh, half of that, and we're looking to add to that on a break below 98.50 on oil. Uh, for Giorgio's Corner, uh, Georgia Fair is the main trader there. He uh, entered a CTSH and PetMed stock. Uh, CTH was on CTSH was on Friday. PetMed was today. Um, and he has two open credit spreads uh, right now. Um, his uh, U.S. Steel one is uh, sitting down slightly um, now um, after he sold the 42-41 vertical put spread. Uh, the stock dropped nine percent today. Um, that really did hurt that vertical put spread. But hopefully. Uh, if we can get a relief recovery, um, push that back into the 41 to 42 range and get out of that for close to neutral. And then his ExxonMobil uh, sold 7750, 75 per, per put spread is doing significantly well. Um, for the extended value portfolio, that's our long term portfolio. Um, we recently sold Big Lots for a 25% gain. Um, and then we also added Panera and Tim Horton's long term positions there. Those are both half positions. We both have bought, we have buy ratings on both of those stocks. And we'd like them to uh, have about 20 to 25% uh, premium um, over their current price in the next uh, 12 months. Uh, for tomorrow, um, we saw really good earnings across the board in after hours. Uh, Amazon was up, Norfolk Southern was up, Las Vegas Sands was up, DreamWorks was up. Electronic Arts, I think, was up, um, and a couple other companies. Uh, the only ones I did see that were down were Panera uh, and Buffalo Wild Wings, that were kind of bigger companies. I thought I saw those down. Um, but for the most part, we had very good earnings across the board, and the big dogs like Amazon, Electronic Arts, DreamWorks, um, and Las Vegas Sands, all to the upside in after hours. That's good. Uh, and I think, honestly, the market is just tired. I'm tired of the dead talks. I'm tired of the mar that it, it controlling the market. And I wouldn't be surprised if we get some really nice earnings in tomorrow morning to couple with the after hours and maybe a good data point or two that we could really see a nice rally tomorrow. Um, just basically like, hey, you know what, Washington, you know what, for today, uh, I don't really want to worry about you. This debt deal is going to get done. Uh, we're moving closer to the deadline, I understand, but I still believe we're going to get it done. And I think we can maybe 
kind of ignore it for one day. I hope so. I'm sick of just sitting in these very tight ranges all day long and just staring at a screen saying, well, there's really nothing to do um, right now. Um, we do have a lot of data coming out tomorrow. We do have durable orders, the Fed Beige Book, the crude inventories. I'm looking for those inventories to be uh, adding. Uh, we saw in after hours, the API numbers are up close to 4 billion barrels added to the inventories. SPR release happening. Uh, I look for those inventories to continue to be to the upside, adding more supply, and I think that will weigh on the, stock, on the price of oil. Uh, moving into tomorrow. I don't think it's going to be long-lasting or significant by any means whatsoever, but we're just looking for a close 2 or 3% trade on those. Uh, earnings from Amazon, again, DreamWorks, Electronic Arts, Las Vegas, Sands, Norfolk Southern, all very solid in after hours tomorrow morning. I know we've got uh, ConocoPhillips, we've got uh, Dow Chemical, we've got Hess, we have Tupperware, uh, we'll think we saw Lockheed Martin is tomorrow, Northrop Grubman, um, so, um, I'm sorry, Leg Mason, not Lock Lockheed Martin, Lockheed Martin was day. Uh, so, you know, a lot of companies across different sectors, again, tomorrow morning, I think their earnings were a little bit more impactful in after hours tonight, um, and I would look for that to be uh, helping the futures out. Uh, and that's going to do it for today. Visit us at www.theoxygroup.com. Email us, call us at 1-800-709-1160 for any information. Be a part of our 70% plus accuracy.